God is good. And all the time, I want to tell you a story somebody told me a few minutes ago before the beginning of 945 Mass. It was actually the, the Welcome Center person. And she told me the story of a boy who, on a very cold winter day, the sun was shining. And then this boy's teacher asked him, isn't, isn't it a beautiful day, such a beautiful day? And the boy said, ah, it's a beautiful day, but the sun seems not to be walking. <laughs> so whether the sun is walking, even though it's a cold, very, very cold day, it's the solemnity of Christ the King, the King of the universe. And it's a day of joy, a day of celebration. Where I come from, today we stay in the church for six, seven, eight hours, depending on how the parish is. Because we need to go around carrying the Lord Jesus Christ in the monstrance. We combine the Corpus Christi and the Christ the King. And we go around telling the whole world that he is king. And my dear brothers and sisters, I know that the job of earthly kings, I believe, has to do with the protection of his kingdom and his people, the defense of his kingdom and his people, providing for his people, being there, arranging his kingdom in such a way that everybody, you know, feels the impact, you know, you know nobody's in lack, and everybody's taken care of. I believe that may be the reason why the people of Israel demanded for a king. They wanted to be like the, the nations around them. Even though God didn't like their the demand or request, he obliged them, and Saul was appointed for them to be a king. God still rejected Saul because of his arrogance and disobedience, and David was chosen. And today, if you listen to the coronation and the anointing, I use the word coronation, an anointing of David as king, the elders said something that's important. In the days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. So David was already doing the job of taking care of the Israelites, even without being a king. And that is why in the first Samuel, when, when David had killed Goliath and he, on his way back, the women were singing a song that Saul didn't like. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands, and Saul didn't like it. So, David was already chosen to be the king, and this choice of a David as king is a divine arrangement. And that is why when the Archangel Gabriel came to Mary, talking about the child she was going to be, the child she was going to be the mother, the Archangel Gabriel said, he's going to be great, and he will be the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Those were the words of God through the, through the mouth of Archangel Gabriel. And so when the three wise men came to see this newborn king, their question was, where is the one who will be born king of the Jews? Still talking about this person. And so Jesus, as he was, he went about his, you know, his mission, his ministries, why he came to the world to die, why, why, why he came to the world, at, almost at the point of his death, Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He said, you say so, this is why I was born. And today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, as we come to the end of this liturgical year, the church, in her wisdom, crowns the year and brings the year, the year to an end with this solemnity of Christ the king of the universe. Next Sunday, we're going to enter Advent. We begin to prepare for the birth of this king. And the Lenten season, will be preparing for his suffering and death. And during the Easter, we celebrate his resurrection. 
And throughout the ordinary time of the year, we'll be studying the life of Jesus Christ and his teachings. But today, we tell the whole world that he is our king, the king of the world, the king of heaven and earth. But not just, you know, the king of heaven, and not just the king of the earth, but the king of heaven too. And that's why when Jesus said to Pilate, I am a king, he went on to explain to Pilate what his kingship was all about. The kings of this world will always try sometimes to lord it over people, but Jesus never does that. Sometimes they use force. Jesus will always give us the freedom to choose to come to him or not. The kings of this world, I've never seen a king who is poor or who was poor. But Jesus came just to be a servant, born in a manger, was born by a humble maiden of Nazareth, and his father was a carpenter. So, the most important question I want us to ask ourselves today as we celebrate this great, great solemnity of Christ the King is that we say that Jesus is the King of heaven and earth. You ask yourself, and I ask myself, Christ is King, yes, but is he the King of my life? Let's go to the gospel and see what different people did to Jesus. The rulers jeered at him. The soldiers mocked him. Even the crowd cried and shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Even an ordinary thief made mockery of him. And so I asked myself, what is my relationship with this my Jesus Christ, who I call a king? Am I in the shoes of these different people, the leaders, the rulers, who mocked him? The soldiers who jeered at him, the crowds that shouted, crucify him, or this thief who was even there to criticize Jesus Christ. It still happens today that some of us still find ourselves, the way we live our lives, the things we do, the things we say, in our homes, in our families, in our, our job, our places of work, in the company of our brothers and sisters and friends, as we live our life, our habits, even, even sometimes well, the way we dress, the way we speak to people, the way we think about people, is it true that Jesus is the king of my life? That's a question I want all of us to ask ourselves. Yes, he is Christ the king, but is he the king of your life or my life? Whatever I do, do I do whatever I do or say anything I say, keeping him in my mind and in my heart that he owns my life and so I have no right to do whatever I want to do with this my life. It belongs to the king. He is my king. The second thing I want us to keep in our hearts as we celebrate this great feast is that Christ is king and there is nothing impossible for him to do. I listened to this thief, this mass. We call him the good thief. And sometimes when I speak to people about this thief, I say, I think he's the greatest of all thieves. He stole here on earth. He was stealing and he was maybe armed robber. And he even stole heaven. And that's, he even stole heaven. That's the way I want to call it. I want to, that's how I want to put it. And even at the point of his death, he stood for Jesus Christ, knowing that even at this point, something can still happen to me and for me. Brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of this liturgical year, and as we draw close to the end of this year, 2022, it's important that we remember that this world is not our home. And it becomes a time for us, my brothers and sisters, even as we get into Advent, to have a reconciliation with God and to clean up our lives and our hearts, saying like this thief, Jesus, remember me when he come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the last thing is that Christ is king, yes. 
And because he is Christ the King, we are all princes and princesses, all of us. And St. Paul makes it abundantly clear, clear to us in, this, in the second reading. Brothers and sisters, you and I. Let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. His death on the cross of Calvary, our baptism, our connection with him has given us a share in himself. And St. Paul continues to say that he is the head. And we are the head of the church and we are the members of his body. He has given us a share in himself. So we are princes and princesses. And if you come to a palace, there's a decorum of behavior and a manner of life in every palace. And so as princes and princesses, there is something expected of us as members of this palace of God's household. And the way of life in this kingdom of Jesus Christ is love. Love among ourselves, love for our brothers and our sisters. No hatred, no rancor, nothing as is opposed to God, love. And so if I really want to think I am part and parcel of this kingdom of Jesus Christ, love should always be in my heart when I relate with anybody who I meet. And then, it's also very important that as we continue our lives here as pilgrims here on earth, that as princes and princesses, if the king stands up, everybody is attentive to him. So every day of our lives should be days of being attentive to God, attentive to Jesus Christ. He has something to say to all of us every time that we come to him to listen to him. As princes and princesses in this kingdom, Attention to Jesus Christ is most important. Our prayer life, coming to church, all the works of charity that the church demands from us or expects from us. We also are called upon to obey him because he says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. As princes and princesses, obedience to God, is also most important so that we can belong here. Submission to his will also is most important. Because that's what we pray. Even at this Mass, we're going to be saying that prayer. Our Father, thy will be done on earth. Submission to the will of God, especially when it is tough for you and for me. Thy will be done. Even when I don't understand it, like Mary, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Thy will be done. That is... One of the ways of life of princes and princesses in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And I invite all of us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, to give thanks finally. St. Paul said, let us give thanks for all that Jesus has done for us. For giving us the beautiful opportunity of being part of him. Always giving thanks, even when it is difficult. He has made us his own. That's why I love to sing Praise my soul, the King of heaven. I love to give thanks to his feet thy tribute bring. Why? Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Those were the things he has done for us. Ransomed, healed, Restored, forgiven. Evermore his praise should sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise the everlasting King.